In today's video, we're going to talk about a mistake that so many preppers make. And then we're going to talk about one way to mitigate that mistake so that you have the best chance of survival after SHTF, right after the channel intro. Shot five. Shot five. Shot five. The roof. Shot five. Welcome to this channel. This channel is all about learning how to prepare for when the dark times come and the grocery stores are stripped bare. And this channel is all about prepping for those dark days while still retaining our integrity and our honor. So just a heads up, today's video is going to feature video footage from one of the prepper retreat locations that my group has that we can evacuate to as a group should things get crazy in the cities. And this retreat location is pretty awesome. It's at a very high point and with very limited ways to reach it on foot because of the very steep terrain that surrounds it. Basically, this is a very defendable location complete with shelter and outbuildings and a well and natural spring water and other natural resources, etc. And the other great thing about this prepper retreat location is that it is outright owned by one of the members of my group. This is not a state park or a state forest, it's a privately owned land. But many of you will probably be able to relate to me. You're probably trying your best to learn as much as you can about prepping so that you better prepare yourself. And you do everything inside of your limited budget to reach goals to make yourself better prepared. So the point of this video is with having this YouTube channel, I will regularly see comments from preppers who say that after SHTF happens that they're just going to hunt for their meat and live off of wild edibles and then also garden. And my fear is, is that if SHTF does happen and we are knocked back to living like the 1800s where we don't have electricity and fuel to run machinery with, and we also don't have grocery stores where the majority of the people buy their food at, my fear is that a lot of preppers will be in for a huge surprise when they do go to put their plans of just living off the land into action, especially when they've not put any action into their plans when times are good. I just think that a lot of preppers who go to implement a plan of suddenly hunting and gardening and foraging, that they're just going to starve to death after SHTF. Just plain and simple. First, as you've probably heard many times from other preppers, wildlife and game have a tendency to disappear during a food crisis. Many regular people have the same idea about hunting for food when the grocery stores go bare. So there will be a lot of competition for that food. And I've also heard many times that a lot of game nearly went extinct in certain areas of the country during the Great Depression. Again, because they were so heavily hunted when people couldn't get their food from the grocery store. And with wild edibles, my belief is that they're only going to be more of a supplement to a person's diet after SHTF. And while I'm definitely no expert on them, it's my understanding that most of them are not calorie dense enough to actually feed you and to keep you from wasting away to starvation. It's my understanding that wild edibles are more for adding flavoring and extra nutrients to the actual meals that you're going to be needing. And then let's also talk about gardening. I just don't think enough preppers truly realize how much work actually goes into developing an area that they can garden in. If your plan is to clear out an area in the country after SHTS so that you can grow a garden, I just want to warn you about how much back-breaking labor actually goes into that. If you've never cleared a garden area before, especially one large enough to actually feed you and your family, but even if that area is already free from tall trees that you would have to cut down and get rid of the stumps, but you would still be surprised of how many roots and big rocks and other things that will be underground. All things that you would have to dig up and cut up and get rid of so that you can actually start doing your gardening. But I've been wanting to do this video for a while now. I think it's important that we discuss the importance of using the machinery and the mechanical advantage now to prepare our bug out locations and our prepper retreat locations for life off grid. And in the video that you're seeing here, where me and part of my group did some work at one of our prepper retreat locations, 
But what we did on this particular weekend was just simply clearing out some paths throughout the retreat. With wooded areas like this, storms and just nature in general will cause trees to fall and block pathways and also for foliage to just overtake the area which would make it unusable. But we use chainsaws and other machinery just to get the paths cleared and then to also clear away all of the foliage so that we would have more usable areas of the retreat. And then with today's modern mechanical help, we got more work done in just a couple of days at that retreat using that machinery than what would have probably taken weeks if we had gone in there with just hand saws and axes and did it manually. And then we, as preppers, we also have to think of the idea of reaching a point of diminishing returns. And what I mean is, if you are manually clearing trees and brush so that you can have a garden after SHTF, then you're going to be expending a lot more calories than what you would actually get out of that garden, at least initially. And then you also have to remember that while you are breaking your back and expending all of those calories to prepare that garden area, you just have to remember that you are not getting any of those calories from that garden yet while you're doing all of that work. You don't get those calories until you've completed the gardening area and you've went through the growing season and then you begin harvesting the food. Now I know that a person can do what's called gorilla gardening where they can plant food in the wild and basically forget about it until you're ready to harvest from it. But again, I think that will mostly supplement somebody's diet and not actually take care of it. And even if your plan is to do gorilla gardening, have you actually started it yet? How long do the different foods that you plan to gorilla garden, how long does it take for those things to actually grow and mature and begin producing food for you? And have you got all of the different varieties of food established yet so that if you do have to start relying on it, that that gorilla garden will actually be producing enough food so that you don't starve to death? So my thoughts are, there is a reason why so many people in history turned to gardening to survive. Now while hunting and foraging for food did put food into their stomachs, actual gardening put the food close to them and they could also care for the crops so that they could get a better harvest of food to sustain them with. And it also allowed them to eat foods that just didn't grow as well in a field or a forest where it would have to compete with the other natural foliage in the area. So what I suggest is, and what my plan is, is to not to purely plan to live off of food that you would have to produce solely after SHTF, at least not at first. What my plan is, and what I practice is, is I have food stores put back to begin with so that these will keep me alive until I can actually start producing my own food. And then along with having these food stores already put back, I will also use every modern day mechanical advantage to get the initial hard backbreaking work done and the area maintained before SHTF happens. I want to have my gardening area cleared out and the soil already prepared and to also have my living area cleared out and already either built or ready to be built on should SHTF happen. I really think that when the balloon goes up, when we're suddenly having to live like we did back in the 1800s, I really think that what you really need to do is to make sure that you survive the initial great die off. And then, once a lot of people die off due to starvation and disease, then you will have a lot more resources to live off of once the population is down. I think that once the population thins down, I think that more wildlife will return, making for more successful hunts for the remaining survivors. And I also believe that more areas to garden will open up. And I also believe that just plain old less competition for food will occur, which will allow for those who prepare to weather the onset of SHTF to be able to live off of the land more easily. Now here's where I want you, more experienced preppers, to comment below. Do you plan, or at least are you already, using today's machinery and mechanical advantage to get your bug out or proper retreat locations ready for SHTF? Or are you just planning to live life like normal until SHTF hits, 
and then suddenly start from scratch with gardening and making your areas livable with manual tools. And for transparency purposes, I personally am not where I want to be in regards to the subject of this video. I don't have all of my gardening areas already cleared out myself, but I'm working at it and I'm doing the best that I can. So please just don't think that I'm trying to act all high and mighty in this video and trying to make myself appear as though I already have everything worked out. And to see a super easy way that a prepper can grow a lot of sweet potatoes for nearly free, a food that will help to keep you from starving after SHTF, then click on the video link that should be appearing on the top of the screen just about now to learn more about that. And if you want to learn how you can do off-grid laundry after SHTF where it's not going to cost you a lot of money to prepare, then click on the video link that should be appearing on the right side of the screen just about now. Anyways folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.